Hello Sigmas. In my previous video, we looked into the spring mass system, which was an example of something that we called a harmonic oscillator. And its motion that we saw was really special. And we called it the simple harmonic motion. Today, we are going to look into another harmonic oscillator. And hence, if you have not watched my previous video, do watch it out because otherwise you will not know what simple harmonic motion is and you will not understand today's video at all. Today's system consists of a massless string. So it consists of a massless string. And a point mass attached to that massless string. And uh, we call this type of a system as a simple pendulum. Now, we know that a string cannot be massless. And we have, although we have point masses in real life, we cannot actually attach them to a string. So these two are just an idealization or assumption that we make about the system. If you uh, have uh, performed experiments with pendulums in your lab, then you will know that real pendulums actually consist of a string which is not massless it has some mass and a bob attached to that uh, string but over here we have a point mass and a massless string because the studying real life of systems is uh, very hard before we study real life systems we have to look into ideal systems of this type and then slowly we remove these idealization and move towards a real life system like we have been doing in this course on mechanics. So now since we know what our system is, let us do something that we have been doing in this course on mechanics and will always be doing as a physics student that is finding an equation for the system. So next uh, we have to find a equation for the system. And to find the equation of a system, first we have to know what are the forces on the system. That is, what are the forces on that point mass. So it is easy to see that uh, there will be obviously the force of gravity on this point mass in the downward direction. And there will be another force of tension in the string T. And there is another interesting thing which I want you to notice about this system. Did you notice that? Yes, this system is actually a system uh, in polar coordinates. Unlike the spring mass system, this is what makes uh, a simple pendulum different from a spring mass system. That is, here we are going to work in polar coordinates, whereas in the spring mass uh, system, we actually work in Cartesian coordinates. And hence, let me quickly set up my polar coordinate and to do that what we are going to do is assume my origin over here the point where the string is attached to the ceiling is my origin o and radius r is hence in the outward direction from the origin and theta will be in this direction like this theta k and now since we have set up a coordinate system we are going to find the force that is those uh, the components of mg along the r cap and theta cap direction so you can easily see that the component of mg along the r cap direction would be mg cos theta why mg cos theta if this angle is theta over here then obviously this angle is also theta uh, because uh, of uh, properties of angles right and hence the force component of mg in the in a direction perpendicular to r cap would be mg sin theta now what you can notice here is that t that is the tension of the string would be equal to mg cos theta because from common sense you know that there is no motion of that mass m along in along the r cap direction in the r cap direction the mass is not moving it is its motion is only along the theta direction and hence the net force in the r cap direction is zero and from newton's uh, first law hence uh, t would has to be equal to mg cos theta so now we know what is going to be the tension on this 
spring. So the net force on that mass m is only mg sine theta. And as you can easily see, the mg sine theta is in a direction opposite to theta cap, right? Theta cap is in this direction, here, yeah, in this direction. And mg sine theta is in the opposite direction to theta cap. And hence, well, the force on the body would be minus mg sine theta. We are only looking at the magnitude, so it is going to be minus mg sine theta. Why minus? Because the force is in a direction opposite to theta cap. And hence, we will get the mass of the point mass uh, times its acceleration is going to be equal to minus mg sine theta. So this m and m cancels. Now, this A is linear acceleration, but we are working in polar coordinates. And hence, we will have to convert the linear acceleration into what its value is going to be in polar coordinates. And we already know that, right, from my video on acceleration and velocity in polar coordinates. We know that the linear acceleration and the angular acceleration is related by this relation, by this equation, that the linear acceleration is equal to r times angular acceleration, where r is the distance of that mass from the origin. And here you can easily see that the distance of the point mass from the origin is this, the length of the string, L. And hence, we are going to get A is equal to L alpha. And I can write alpha as uh, d squared theta upon dt squared. And hence, what we are going to get is L d squared theta upon dt squared is equal to minus mg minus g sine theta because m has got cancelled so we will get minus g sine theta and upon rearranging that is i'm going to take l in on this side and then the entire term along with l on the other side like i did in my video on spring mass system to get theta double dot plus g by l sine theta is equal to this. Now, one thing that you can notice about this equation is that it is very, very close to the equation of a simple harmonic oscillator, except for this sine theta term, unfortunately. But if we can convert this system into a simple harmonic oscillator by you displacing the pendulum only by a very small amount. And why can we do that or how can we do that? That is because theta, if it is very, very small, right? If theta is very small, then sine theta is approximately theta. You can look at, if you look at the graph of sine theta, it will look something like this, right? And if you plot theta, it will be a linear graph like this and this is theta f of theta and this is theta and you will observe that for small theta that is uh, let me use another color that is this part for very small theta sine theta is equal to theta and we are going to exploit this fact now so if you displace the pendulum with by a very very small angle then your equation of motion actually becomes this that is the equation of a simple harmonic motion where obviously omega is equal to under root g by l and again you can observe from the equation that unlike the equation of simple harmonic motion of a spring mass system that is that was x double dot plus omega square x equal to zero instead of x we have theta and which is obvious because here we work in polar coordinates and hence we got an equation of motion also in polar coordinates. So for very small angles I have just replaced sine theta with theta and that gives us the equation of motion of a simple pendulum which is also the equation of motion of simple harmonic motion in polar coordinates. Isn't that just amazing? Now since we have the equation of motion, let us solve it, right? Otherwise, what is the point of having the equation of motion when you cannot solve it? 
So if you solve that equation of motion, since it is exactly the same as that of the that of a spring mass system except for theta replaced by x, we are going to get the same type of solution. That is theta would be equal to a sin omega t plus b cos omega t. Now you might be wondering what are these a's and b's, right? What are they? Now you can find if you have ever learned differential equations, you will know that you can find those a and b's by using initial conditions. That is, what is the value of theta at t equal to zero? So if I do that, let's use uh, look at some of the initial conditions, possible initial conditions. Let's say uh, this was my simple pendulum, right? Let's say what I do is at t equal to zero, I displace the simple pendulum by uh, by an angle theta naught. At t equal to zero, the simple pendulum is displaced by an angle theta naught, and then I leave it. And it is going to follow that path, right? It is going to execute simple harmonic motion. So let me use that condition over here. So instead of theta, I have theta naught would be equal to a sine instead of t I will put zero so sine zero plus b cos zero right instead of t over here in this equation I have put zero because we are looking at the situation of this uh, uh, system at t equal to zero sine of zero is just zero so we are going to get b is equal to theta and what would be a since uh, its velocity is zero over here at t equal to zero, right? Its angular velocity is also zero at t equal to zero. And hence d theta upon dt is zero. So if I find omega that which is equal to d theta upon dt would be equal to what? Okay, so omega I've already used my angular frequency. So let me call it something else. Let me call it omega prime. So omega prime, which is d theta upon dt would be equal to a omega cos omega t minus b omega sin omega t. How did I get this? I just differentiated this, right? I differentiated this equation and I got them. And the angular uh, velocity at t equal to zero is zero. So you will get zero is equal to a omega cos zero minus b omega sine zero and hence you can easily see from here that you are going to get a equals so if i substitute the value of a and b back into this equation let me call it equation one so if i substitute a and b in equation one i'm going to get a is zero so i'm going to get theta is equal to theta naught cos omega t because b is equal to theta, right? So in this manner, if you know what was the state of the system at t equal to zero, you can find what its state is going to be at any other time. You can find a and b according to that. This is not the only possible initial conditions. There could be other initial conditions also, which depends upon the problem, but I have solved it for this particular initial condition. Next thing that we have to find about this system is uh, its uh, time period. Every uh, harmonic oscillator has a time period. And for this harmonic oscillator also, which is the simple pendulum, we have to now find its time period. So you know the relationship omega t is equal to t pi and you can simplify the time periods from here t pi by omega and we know that uh, we omega was under root g by n and hence the time period of a simple pendulum is 2 pi under root l by g and with this we have found every single property of the simple pendulum so i will see you in the next video with more such interesting uh, physics videos but for that, you will have to subscribe to this channel and also like this video. Thanks for watching.